member's statements. I recognize the member for Mississauga Malton. Speaker, believing is in yourself is extremely important. Life is difficult, comes with its challenges, some small and some very big. But in order to overcome them, we must believe we can. These inspiring words came from Honorable Dr. Asha Sait, Canada's first South Asian Canadian female senator. Thank you so much. With over 45 years of experience as a gynecologist, she has served families across Canada delivering thousands of babies during her career. This past family day, Dr. Sage joined the resident of Mississauga Malton for paint night, where a resident recognized her as the doctor who delivered her baby near 40 years back. It was very heartwarming to see the deep connection she has created within our community. Dr. Sage's passion for eye health has been transformative. Serving as the National Fundraising Chair and the National Board of Directors for CNIB, she has worked tirelessly to raise awareness of the critical importance of eye care and launched May as the National Vision Health Month. Dr. Said is currently working on ensuring every child gets comprehensive eye testing at an early stage. With loving husband, Dr. Arun Said, and two accomplished daughters, Angie and Dr. Anila, her contributions remind us that the people are bigger than their size and can have generational impacts. So thank you, Dr. Asha Said, for being an inspiration to the women in Mississauga Malton and across Ontario. We pray for your health and well-being so that you can keep giving back to the community. Thank you, Dr. Asha Said. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for London North Centre. Speaker, I rise today to remember the life and light of Brianna Broadfoot. Brianna was a young woman of 17 whose life was cut short by intimate partner violence. Brianna sought help. The accused was ordered by the court not to contact her. The criminal justice system needs to better protect women like Brianna. Brianna's family, Jess, Brett, and brother Lucas have turned unthinkable pain and grief into action. Lucas is mature beyond his years and is a strong voice for young women, but it should never be this way. The City of London declared IPV an epidemic last year, joining AMO and over 100 municipalities across the province. I also think of Cheryl Sheldon, turned away from one shelter, it was full, and even though she was directed to an open bed at another shelter, she never made it there. Her life was taken, lost to IPV. Here's what the government could do right now. Provide multi-year based funding instead of project based grants. Ensure funding meets demand because no shelter should ever have to turn away women escaping violence. They also shouldn't have to fundraise to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. Build affordable, non-market housing so women have a place to rebuild their lives after the shelter. Make sure brave survivors of sexual assault are not denied justice. Don't set rapists free because of court backlogs. I want to thank the amazing folks at London Abuse Women's Centre, Anova and Rothholm for the work they do to save and rebuild lives. You do the work of angels, and the government should pay you what you're worth. The time is now. The province must declare intimate partner violence an epidemic and break the cycle of men's violence against women. Thank you. I'm not going to say the member for Whitby Ajax. <laughs> I recognize the member for Ajax. Thank you. Speaker, I rise today to highlight an exciting addition to the great riding of Ajax that will help address the growing demand for accessible health care in our community. A long-standing staple in our community, led by pharmacist manager Reza Gaffi at Rexall, has recently added a new pharmacist-led clinic at the corner of Harwood South and Westney Road South. A much-needed resource at a time when health care is top of mind for Ajax and beyond. Aligning with our vision of providing quality care when you need it, where you need it. By expanding the role of pharmacists, this clinic offers a variety of services, including treating 14 major minor ailments such as sore throat, pink eyes and shingles, and more. And in addition, supporting patients with medication management, health screening, and vaccinations. This model supports our healthcare system by alleviating pressures at our hospitals and emergency rooms, ensuring that patients can access more care quickly and efficiently. I thank the Rexall for their investment in our community and for helping to strengthen Ontario's healthcare infrastructure. 
This initiative is, init is exactly the kind of innovation we need to continue to ensure expanding so Ontarians have access to care they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Kiwetanong. Uh, me good speaker. Uh, tomorrow, uh, November the 8th, is Indigenous Veterans Day. Uh, this day was officially recognized for the first time in 1994, 30 years ago in Manitoba. Over 7,000 First Nations people served in the First and Second World Wars in the Korean War. And likely around 12,000 indigenous people served during the 20th century's major conflicts. Over 500 of them lost their lives. For, the, uh, for those who returned, indigenous veterans uh, were not given the same recognition granted to non indigenous veterans. After World War II, indigenous veterans returned home to a country that continued to discriminate against them. Many indigenous veterans lost their Indian status because they participated in the military and some saw their lands taken away and given to non-indigenous veterans. It is important that, that uh, Indigenous Veterans Day exists so that our veterans are honored for their sacrifices, which came at great cost. I encourage everyone to educate themselves about the history of how Indigenous veterans were treated in Canada. Kiwetnik today is full of many young people serving. We thank you for your sacrifice and service. And miigwech to all Indigenous veterans for your service in the military and for helping to defend and protect democracy here and around the world. Miigwech. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm honoured to rise today to congratulate Whitby resident Pat Ferran on his induction into the Order of Ontario. The Order of Ontario is the province's highest civilian honour. It's awarded to an Ontarian who has shown the highest levels of excellence and achievement in their field and whose impact has left a legacy in our province, our country and around the world. As a trusted Consumer Alert reporter with CTV News Toronto, Pat has dedicated three decades to protecting and educating Ontario's consumers. His persistent and insightful reporting on consumer fraud has helped thousands of Canadians recover millions of dollars, proving his unwavering commitment to public welfare. Today, Speaker, Pat Ferran is one of Ontario's finest citizens whose dedication exemplifies excellence in public service. Congratulations, Pat, to you and your family on a well-deserved induction into the Order of Ontario. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontario, Ontario inherited a homelessness crisis of 21,000 people who are homeless across the province from the previous Liberal government. And since, but since the Conservatives have been elected, that homelessness crisis has now exploded to 234,000 people homeless across Ontario. And there are tent encampments in every community across this province. And it's a humanitarian nightmare for the people in the encampments and for the communities around them. But the Conservatives have consistently voted down every solution the Ontario NDP has brought forward. They voted against building 250,000 non-profit homes, including so co-ops and social and supportive housing. They voted against restoring rent control, and they supported the rent eviction of seniors by the Chartwell Corporation in Mississauga, and that Chartwell Corporation actually is taxpayer subsidized. Now the Conservatives are proposing to use the notwithstanding clause to strip Ontarians of their charter rights. 
And not many people understand that the notwithstanding clause strips us of our fundamental freedoms, including freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of movement, and our legal rights, so that if we are arrested, we must be charged and we must be brought before a judge, and we cannot be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment. These are the, these are the rights that this government wants to strip us of, and they are using the homelessness crisis as an excuse to use the notwithstanding clause. It's absolutely shameful. The solution to homelessness is to build housing, not to strip us of our human, human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In my community of Richmond Hill, we are blessed with many local heroes, men and women who answer the call of duty in wars, peacekeeping missions, and during critical moments in our history. These veterans embody the true spirit of service, sacrifice, courage, and resilience. They have fought, bled, and sometimes died to ensure our peace and security so we could live freely and in a prosperous and just society. We have worked hard to make sure that these brave men and women are never forgotten. We have displayed their banners throughout the town, each one with the name and the story of the veteran, reminding everyone who passes by of the debt we owe them. As a Canadian who immigrated from Hong Kong, I especially moved by the stories of Canadian soldiers in Hong Kong during the World War II. The stories of these men resonate deeply within me. These soldiers fought with dignity and courage, knowing that they might not return home. They sacrificed everything to defend not just their comrades, but the values we hold in Canada, democracy, peace, and freedom. Their bravery under impossible circumstances is something we must never forget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Haldimand, Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning to pay tribute to Marie Trainer, a Haldimand County Councillor and former mayor. Marie passed away last Thursday from complications sustained nearly two months ago after being involved in a serious motor vehicle collision. The self-styled People's Mayor was laid to rest Tuesday in the Hagersville area where she ran the fields as a little country girl who enjoyed the simple but rich things in life like being surrounded by family and friends. I met Marie at the beginning of my political career in 1999. I immediately knew she was a force to be reckoned with. Widowed at a young age and left to raise three boys on her own, Marie stared adversity in the face and found new opportunities for herself. And as a result, Haldeman County got the very best in service and in leadership. Marie began her 40-year political career in 1985 as a councillor and served as mayor from 1991 until 2010. Last year, she returned to office in a ward by-election, and my goodness, it was as though the hands of time had been turned back. She was reinvigorated, determined to fight against the proposed city of 40,000 at the Nanticoke Industrial Park. It was just a few weeks ago, Marie insisted she attend a council meeting from her hospital bed. It was this grit and determination that I admired so much. I will miss the usual greeting of a hug, a kiss, and then in a very calm voice, let's get down to business. Rest in peace, sweet Marie. Member statements. The member for Newmarket, Aurora. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Cet été, j'ai eu le plaisir de faire une annonce manquante pour soutenir les années à francophones. Thank you, Mr. President. So this summer, I had the pleasure of announcing that we were going to support the Francophone seniors in our region. And it was really a real pleasure to announce that the Francophone Association of the York Region and the Communauté de Trail Blanc received grants to support the well-being and social integration of our seniors. AFRI will benefit of a grant of up to $25,000 for its programs, Seniors at Play. 
uh, giving seniors of the York region to participate to physical activities as well as cultural and social activities in the coming seven months. This program really meets an actual need for leisure activities that are tailored for our francophone seniors. Uh, the CTB will receive up to $21,800 for this program, keeping our seniors active, that is offering educational and intergenerational activities. Those initiatives showcase the commitment of our government towards the vitality of bilingualism in Ontario and creates opportunities for social inclusion and for the promotion of the well-being of our Francophone seniors in the New Market, Aurora and York region and as well as in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise here this morning to honour Gail Christie, the former mayor of York, who passed away recently. And I would like to welcome her daughter, Rebecca Christie, and her granddaughters, Lauren and Ashley, to the House today. Gail was a true community champion, representing the people of York in many roles as trustee, alderman, mayor, and as a member of the Metro Toronto Council. She was a trailblazer in 1970 as one of the first women to enter politics and the first to serve the mayor as mayor of York. Gail was an incredible advocate for infrastructure, economic development, youth education, and employment for community safety, and for the most vulnerable, and in particular, for the York Town Women's Shelter. She was, a com she was committed to public service, and she worked together with leaders from all political parties and across the pri pri private sector and the public sector to build a better community. Speaker, everyone in politics on both sides of the aisle knew who Gail was, as many had stories of her, reached out to them to help her constituents. Her determination and courage helped to pave the way for future generations, and they remain an inspiration in many here in this House today. We know that Gail's legacy will live on and have a positive impact for many years to come. On behalf of all the members, I want to extend my sincerest condolences to Rebecca and the entire Christie family today. In the past, 